And you know I'm putting on my Quebec accent, my Quebecois. Okay, cut the Quebec accent. <laughs> I actually caught a coolie load. Oh my gosh, guys. Hang on. What? Hey guys, welcome back to Matt Keeps Fish. In this video, we have a lot of awesome stuff going on. I will not lie. I will not lie. We have so much going on in this video. And uh, let's just jump right in. So what we're doing first is we are doing a big water change. We're doing a big old water change because I missed it yesterday. It's supposed to be every Sunday and today obviously is Monday. While the water level is low, we're gonna move the uh, hill stream loach or the Borneo loach, our mini hill stream loach, into our new river style setup. If you guys haven't seen that uh, video on the 40 gallon rescape, it'll be right there. So go check it out. We, also, we are also going to move the coolie loaches into the 10 gallon and the, uh, the rainbow goby or the stifodon goby into the 10 gallon as well. And then afterwards, after those are all settled in and our water change is done, we're gonna skip forward a little bit. We're gonna check in with them, see how it's going. Then we're gonna talk about some comments that had uh, come up recently about how to uh, take care of loaches and just bottom feeders in general uh, the right way, what the best tank is for them and stuff like that. We might sell some fish in this video. We'll see, cause we are making room and we're setting up for the next video but I'm actually filming tomorrow <laughs> when my family comes over uh, where we go to La Niche. Uh, it's called La Niche something. It'll be right there, but uh, it's this nice aquarium store in Quebec. And you know I'm putting on my Quebec accent, my Quebecois. Okay, cut the Quebec accent. <laughs> we are going to put some awesome fish in the 40 gallon. Hopefully we're going to find some great stuff. So I hope you guys stay tuned for that video. And now let's get a water change done. Now the easy part is done. It's time for the really, really hard part. <laughs> and that is gonna be taking out the clue loaches. We're gonna start with the clue loaches. Then we're gonna try and get the stiphon on goby. We're gonna put them in the 10 gallon. Then we're gonna get the um, Borneo loach and put it in the 40 gallon. I might also move the female guppies as well because I, I think they're withholding milt now, which is not good because that means they're just gonna keep fertilizing the eggs inside of them. So I wanna put them in an environment that's not as safe for fry, if that makes sense, because I think that they will give birth less and they'll use up that milk less. And I also wanna see what they look like in here in case I wanted to put like a half beak in here or a killifish or something similar. Hey guys, uh, quick update. <laughs> uh, it's an hour later and I've accomplished pretty much nothing, so go me. Uh, I actually did take the floating plants out though, so it's a little easier to see in there. I also took a bunch of the hardscape out, so it is uh, becoming easier to get, the, get at these clue loaches, uh, but still really hard. <laughs> I also rescaped the 10 gallon a little bit. This wasn't supposed to be really escaping video, but it's gonna have to be. So uh, if we just go like that, you can see, I brought the rocks down a little bit um, for, you know, whatever reason. It's not supposed to be, it was supposed to be a uh, sort of hill stream-esque, river-esque um, aquarium. And now it's kind of not gonna be that anymore. I'm thinking pencil fish. I'm hoping pencil fish. There's a lot of ideas that I have. Uh, it's probably gonna be empty-ish for a little while. I'm just gonna wait until I find like pencil fish, half beaks, uh, zebra loaches, stuff like that. I, I really wanna wait on uh, more expensive, more rare stuff uh, until I get it. And that kind of gives me a chance to enjoy the aquariums for what they are. And hopefully never have to rip these tanks up again. Guys, you're not gonna believe this. I actually caught a coolie loach. Now don't worry about him being out in the air. I am gonna keep him sort of in the water, but he can breathe atmospheric oxygen. He has kind of an under, underdeveloped lung, but that's crazy. I never thought I'd catch one. They're so cool up close. Okay, I think like 20 minutes later, I'm really getting into the zone here. I mean, most of the stuff is taken out of the aquarium by now, um, but you know, this is just gonna have to be another rescape video. 
two times in a row. That's not good. <laughs> uh, but we finally caught our little, um, our little stif our little stifidon goby. Um, they're all floating right now in a plastic container in the 10 gallon, and by they I mean uh, three out of four coolie loaches. So I have one more coolie loach to catch. I'm gonna rescape this aquarium, then we're gonna catch the Borneo loach and put him in here. It's going well. All right, now if you look with me, it's really nice and open here. So we should be able to spot the coolie loach, especially since uh, they really have a vibrant pattern from above. You can see the black phantom tetras right there. Really hard to see against the black gravel. But we should be able to spot this coolie loach if he's out and about. Otherwise, we're probably gonna have to tear apart this rock structure a little bit. All right, so done and done. Uh, all the fish are caught. Uh, one of the coolie loaches managed to jump out of the container and now it's in the tank. So I guess uh, I got to see what it was uh, moving into a little early. We also got the Borneo loach out of there. He actually just kind of latched onto my finger and I just kind of, a really easy trick with um, sucker type fish. If you got plecos, if you got bristle nose, if you got stuff like that, is if they're latched onto a decoration, just put the net under them, lift the decoration up until it's out of the water, and they'll drop down into the net. So that's what I did, but with my fingers. So we got all the fish captured. Now we got to rescape this mess. <laughs> and uh, then everything will be set to go. And the real experiment here, the video is technically about uh, what is the best environment for loaches, and we're testing that out. You know, I'm getting a little bit more sand area for the coolie loaches. I'm getting a little bit more fast moving waters for the Borneo loach but we're also testing out uh, should loaches be with other fish because Borneo loaches can have a, uh, a bad rap as being aggressive. So we're gonna see if that's true, if they are aggressive towards other sucker type fish. So that will include in here uh, the autosynclus. We have four autosynclus now. I don't know what happened to the other two. Again, probably got stuck uh, and Kitster, of course. Now, Kitster is the star of the show. If anything harms him, it's out of there. So we'll see what happens. I love to experiment with these kind of things and we have a backup plan. So we're set to go. I hope you guys enjoy this. I gotta say before we move on, isn't it cool how moss works? Like I put this moss in a little while ago and you can already see right there, it's kind of glued itself to the rock. Moss is just so cool. Some mosses are really hard to grow but they are so cool, so good for baby fish. They just grow everywhere. I think if I had to have one plant, it would probably be moss in my aquarium. I don't deny there's some strange evolutionary process going on, but mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. guys so I think this is the scape here look at these phantoms they are so cool they're probably the fish I'm gonna sell though so if you guys are interested in a group of six phantoms two males and four females and you're in the area hit me up and uh, we can set up a time to meet and probably film a video but what well, crab block <laughs> but this is the uh, the new scape it's kind of glary right now we'll do some cinematics later but man look at that I love it a lot more than the other one. I like that the gaps are all filled in right underneath the driftwood here. Of course, there's a hole on the side there, but uh, nothing you can do about it. And then we have this big open space and then more rocks back in there. And of course, we're gonna have the river effect coming right down there. So let's uh, get our river loach in there. Look at all these floating plants. Thanks for the floaters, Zach. Guys, I'm, kinda, <laughs> I'm kinda freaking out here. I don't know where the Borneo loach is. I put them in this bucket and now I don't see them. Um, so that's a little bit terrifying. I will be back in a second. Guys, I kid you not, he jumped out. This little, and now he's suctioning himself to the floor. Oh my gosh, guys, hang on. Okay, there he is. He's, he's not letting go of my finger. What a crazy guy. What the heck? Does he just not care? I mean, he could have only been out of there for like five minutes. Let's put him in the big tank now. Oh my gosh, I feel his little heartbeat. He's so freaked out. Oh my gosh. 
Poor guy. Must have been too cold in the bucket. Let's put him on the glass here. Come on, bud. There you go. And he's gone. There he is. I, I have no words. Oh my gosh. He was actually crawling across the floor. <laughs> what? Okay, so this is where you go back and you think, okay, what did I do wrong? Obviously what I did wrong is I put a waterfall climbing fish in a bucket and thought it would be okay to just leave him like that. Now, he, was, he could have only been on the floor for like two minutes, but... What the heck, guys? All right, so I am gonna end up uh, putting the male guppies in the 10 gallon and the female guppies in here. You see I already got the female guppies in there because they were asleep in the 10 gallon. And I have two more males to get and then all the transitioning should be done. I like the purple light, by the way. All right, guys, so that is pretty much it. We moved the loaches. Um, we're gonna feed the fish. Excuse me, burps. We're gonna feed the fish uh, and then go into a cinematic. And then after the cinematic, we're gonna talk a little bit about the ideal setup for loaches, answer some very old comments. They'd be very old at this point. <laughs> but just answer some questions and uh, yeah, let's feed these fish. You can see this water really cleared up a lot. We got our tweezers, we got our brine shrimp. Let's see if we can get any of them to jump up. Come on. Yeah, let's put it in for them. Gone. <laughs> oh, destroyed. Look at how big Kitster is. Oh my gosh, look at Kitster and uh... oh, he needs a name. Guys, leave me a name in the comments for the Borneo Loach, because he definitely, definitely deserves one. But it's cool that they're hanging out. I'm hoping that um, they get along nicely, and they seem to. I guess he's not as, as aggressive as a uh, Pandagara or Tiger Hillstream Loach. So maybe we'll get like five more, <laughs> and maybe we'll breed them in here. How cool would that be? Look at this guy. Absolutely wiling. And all of our guppy fry up here. Let's give them a little bit of food. Let's see if this guy will eat a nice big piece of brine shrimp. Oh, now I got scared of it. Not too many shots of the coolie loaches, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the rest of the brine shrimp in the 40 gallon and watch them go to town for the first part of the cinematic. I think the coolie loaches need more cover to feel a little safer because they are darting around a little bit, uh, but they did just go in the aquarium like three hours ago, so. Uh, all right. You're hearing the music now, let's get on to that cinematic.
guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that cinematic. I'm sorry there were not any loaches in the cinematic, or not many, because um, they were kind of shy right after I put them in, and I had to do the cinematics right after I put them in, because the day after, I got a bunch of stuff. I got, I got a background, so we're gonna start doing black backgrounds on the 10 gallon. I think it'll look really good with the new fish I have in there, which I can't tell you about yet. Gonna have to wait until next Sunday for that. And then also, you know, just a ton of stuff moving around. But we're just solely gonna be talking about loaches in this video, updating on nothing else. We're just gonna talk about what is the best environment for keeping a loach. Before I go on, I would like to mention, I'm sorry about the last video's audio quality. I had like, I don't know if you can see it from here, but I had like a, a big white, piece of paper, a big white poster board behind the camera that I thought would help the lighting somehow, but it just reverberated the sound and made it kind of echoey. So if you picked up on that, I am sorry. So what is the best environment for a loach? Um, now this kind of got in, I was already gonna move the loaches around, but this question kind of got um, brought up in a comment in the Clue Loach video, which is currently my most popular video which is weird because it's not that good, <laughs> you know? It's just uh, people like Kalu loaches, I guess. So in the in the description of that video, um, not in the description, in the comments of that video, uh, this guy brought up the the topic of what is the best substrate, what is the best environment for Kalu loaches? because he was saying that he has a bunch and they are out all the time, absolutely all the time. While mine, after like the first few months, like two months later, they're all hiding all of a sudden. So I was going back and forth with these people in the comments and the, the focus was obviously Cooley Loaches and it was all about like what is the reason behind mine being so shy and his being so active and out and about. And um, it could have been lighting, it could have been substrate, and it could have been the amount of plants in the aquarium. Now we, we saw Zach's aquariums a little while ago and he actually has only two Cooley Loaches. The difference is they're out all the time. It's not a, it's not just a numbers game with Kulu Loaches to make them out a lot, it's, or to make them come out a lot. So um, you definitely need plants as part of it, I would assume, but do you need sand is the question. Do you need a soft substrate that to just caress their, their barbels to make sure that they don't get injured? Um, now, my argument, and you know, there's a lot of back and forth with fish keepers on YouTube about this, uh, with clue loaches, with a lot of loaches, and with corridoras very prominently, is do you keep them on sand? And um, in the wild, they are usually not on sand. They're usually on like sharp rocks. <laughs> and do those cut the barbells? Yes, they do, they do. And so the argument becomes, just because they're kept in the wild, uh, not kept in the wild, <laughs> just because they're in the wild in those environments doesn't mean that we should put them through the same kind of rough conditions in the aquarium, you know? Like, you wouldn't put uh, plastic and, like, old tires in your aquarium to symbolize the naturally kind of dirty water that these fish are coming from. So why would you put in, like, sharp rocks? Why would you give them a hard time um, without needing to. Now if we go back in time when I had the Corridor Sabrosis, I did lose two. It wasn't because of sharp rocks, I don't think, um, because this is actually my only sanded tank. It is dual substrate, but it's Riverstone. By the way, I'm talking about my 10 gallon. <laughs> it is Riverstone and it's sand, so very smooth, very soft, very easy on the Corridor's barbells. Uh, some of them did still lose their barbells. I have no idea how. It might have been stress related. Uh, because of my hard water, so maybe they're just a more um, they're just a more vulnerable and delicate species of Corridora. Um, but nonetheless, some of them lost their barbells, and even still, with their barbells gone, they were able to find food because I hand it to them on a silver platter. I make it very available for them. I'll put in an algae wafer. I'll put in a bunch of nice meaty foods for them to go get because they're the only bottom feeder in there, or they were at the time, minus the. Uh, the shrimp and the snails, but we do make it a little easier on them. So can you get away with putting them on sharper rocks? Yeah, probably. You, you're more at risk for bacterial infection if you do that, but even if they lose their barbells, you're still giving them like a ton of food widely available. And depending on what you have in there, there's probably not a lot of competition. So carrying forward with what is the best environment for Kalu I would definitely have to say that 
above all things is you need lots of plants. They feel so much safer with plants, more so than numbers, more so than lighting. Just having something to kind of compress, just, just to kind of hold them in its branches or in its, uh, in its roots makes them feel very safe because they know that they're the only one that's gonna be able to root through there. If we look at the um, the art on, or the, the picture that I have on my YouTube channel, it's a Kuliloge kind of weaving its way through the hygrophilia or the rotala or whatever the plant was back when I had it. Now it's all dead except for one stem. But uh, back when I did have it, the Kuliloges were out a lot more. Now, um, the lighting also changed. I had I got a better light, but I don't always keep it on the higher light setting. So I think the real reason why the Kuliloches hid so much is because they had less plant matter in there, less foliage to hide behind. Uh, even when the hygrophilia was dying back, they would still hide in among the roots um, where it was still alive, where it was had kind of grown down, and even where it was dying because at least they had some kind of cover behind there. So when it comes to any shy loach, I would say the most important thing above all else is put in plants. You can have, well, even, even, I think corridors are more out and about. This is going to be mostly about loaches. Corridors are kind of a side note. But with any shy loach, it's super important to have plants. More so than hardscape or substrate or lighting, plants are going to make them feel super, super safe and protected. The reason I say more so than hardscape is because hardscape is not as malleable. It's not as soft. If I put a bunch of rocks in there, like I am maybe doing my 10 gallon, I don't know. I'm not spilling any secrets for next video. <laughs> um, but like in my 10 gallon, the Cooley Loaches can't really move around that rock. It's, you know, they can dive into gravel and stuff like that and sand if you had no uh, hiding places at all, other than substrate in your aquarium, they would dive into your rock or your sand which is where you really get problems with um, them cutting up their faces and stuff like that. But with plants, they can move those plants around. It's soft, it, doesn't, it does not harm them, and it shades them, and it oxygenates them, and it's just, live plants, if you're gonna keep shy loaches, are, I make, I make shy loaches sound like it's its own species, but if you're gonna keep any loach that's shy, make sure that you have plants in there with a nice big root system, something that grows fast, uh, jungle valve works great, something like that, you're gonna have a lot of success. So in summary, continue giving your fish a good environment, uh, even if it's better in the wild, don't, don't try and match the biotope too closely, cause you'll kill your fish. So that's all from me guys. I'm sorry this video was too, it was really long. It was a long video. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it nonetheless, and if you did, like the video down below. Subscribe if you wanna see more like this, care guides, uh, tech stuff, I don't know. Um, stuff like that, vlogs, lots of aquarium stuff. Don't miss next video because it's going to be awesome, and I will see you guys next Sunday. Hello? <laughs> <laughs>